They're gonna scale very well with the Yi and Shin as well as the Natan. And Fovius as well, if he is present in most of the team fights, it's gonna be a very, very difficult for the side of RQ to micromanage a lot of different damage coming in from a lot of different angles. Oh man, all right, let's see here. For you, Leo, I want to ask the same question, but for Blacklist International. Yeah, uh, I, I have full trust uh, that the Estes will carry quite a bit of the early game into the mid, where we'll start to see Edward spike up. It's just a matter of finding that window. Edward has to know when it's time. Well, let's get into game two, Singapore. Are you ready? The Royal Rumble continues here as we enter the land of dawn. Right now, looking at both of the compositions again, we got to have to look at this Bruno. How is he going to play? Because traditionally, how we look at Bruno is he can push the turrets very, very fast. Which again, this is what RQ, they are trying to set up. This is what they are trying to do. Win one lane, really push their advantages, and try to snowball up there. If they manage to actually take out Oh My Venus, that will be the icing on the cake. Honestly, I actually really like the Bruno now that I think about it because Blacklist, they want to group up <laughs> the around the world. That's going to be a very, very big ultimate here. Yeah, but Wave of the World, they have to time it well again uh, because that's, uh, that slide tackle yes. could be punished by Fovius, by Edward. So again, there's a checkmate on both sides. It's just a matter of decision making again. There's something I noticed here. I think Araki Hoshi, if I'm not mistaken, in under the two minute mark, they got a free first blood on to Oh My Venus. Now they're not so aggressive. Yeah, they're playing it a little bit chiller right here. Again, com composition wise, they need to wait for the Bakido to set up the things here as look at that. Bruno Ouch. does so much damage here in the early stages of the game. Wise though, with Haji on the backs, they might be looking for the early aggression. Vin will be able to dash away and both of the teams just going for farm at this point. I love that Albert knows that he's much, much faster than what the rest of Black International can do. Hence, he's able to go for that small rotation, take that small camp, and then eventually prop up for this first turtle five seconds away. Is there going to be a collapse though? Oh, there is. Oh, R7 goes in for the Wave of Sider. That's going to be first blood picked up by RRQ. Haji goes in for the Jikundo, able to run away, but it's going to be the stun connecting, unable to actually, as Haji will be able to flicker out of it. But RRQ with that pick, they're going to go for the turtle. Yeah, this is exactly what they want to do. They want to set something up, and they should be able to secure this turtle, but right oh. now... Oh! Yeah, it's going to be Edward actually jumping into the Demonic Force right there. Oh. Still going in once more. It's going to be a lot of damage placed. Albert is going to be able to pick that kill up, though. Why is unable to? And that's a 1 for 0, but with Venus back, they'll have to sustain. Do they have the damage to contest? Right now, for the side of RQ, this is basically doing what they want to be done. Edward getting that first death will slightly slow the way that he is going to build up into this game. And Araki Hoshi, with the drive that they have, they should be able to contest this turtle very, very healthily because on the side of Blacklist International, if they get anywhere close, they're going to get eaten up by Albert on this Paquito. Ooh. So the game is playing the way that we expected it to be. But Araki Hoshi, can they keep up this aggression? That is going to be the question. What I'm interested in is the fact that Araki Hoshi are taking their time. They could have really forced out that turtle, uh, but Albert says, okay, you know what? I'll just take my buffs first, and then we'll slowly roll up to it. Turtle Slain brought to you by the STB. But what this does get, though, is some space for Oheb up top. Between the Bruno and the Nathan, I'm, I'm guessing maybe Oeb just wants to find the window where, and yes, he does. Look, look at how much they took away from the Outer Church Energy Shield. This Everything. might be the answer. This might be the gambit. Yeah, it might be. And Haji now going for Vin right there. Still an understanding that they may have no follow-up at this point of the game. Wise does not deal that much damage to be able to one-shot a Ruby. But RRQ controlling the pace of the game. Very good response from Blacklist. We'll see how it continues here entering the fourth minute of the game. Yeah, entering the four minute of the game right now, it's a little bit unfortunate that from the side of Blacklist International, the turtle is going to spawn at the top. So right now, Blacklist International, if they set this up wrong, Araki Hoshi can take full advantage and really force Oheb out of the slate. Oh, it's going to be Haji caught out right now. R7 goes in for the Bravest oh. Fighter. Haji still able to flicker away and RRQ have burned their resources to look for a pick in that bottom side. Oheb, look at what he's doing. He has the entropy to get away as well, but it might be the collapse. Venus might be caught out here. Skylar goes in for flicker. It's going to be Albert coming in and securing the kill. One turret for one kill. It is RRQ with the pace, but... Honestly, I prefer Blacklist there with the turret take. Yes, and Oh My Venus, you can clearly see the Queen plotted that out. The Queen was understanding of the long con. Yes. Did not even use a Purify. Yep. Uh, okay, take me. Just take me. This is know? the sacrifice. Yep. And again, like the way that he is playing, once he has used his skill... Oh no, maybe oh. not this one. Yeah, that was definitely not planned right there, but... 
technically, you can kind of say it, it's planned, because Blacklist, they're all playing the cross map really well. As long as Wise and Oheb, their scaling is perfectly fine, because again, Blacklist International, they really should not be looking at fights right now, unless mm -hmm. from the side of Arkyoshi, they overextend with very, very low HP. Mm -hmm. Exactly what they're doing, and they've done so well to force Albert to come up here, but eventually that would have been his timing anyways, since Turtle is coming up here now at the 5 minute 10 second mark for members of Arkyoshi actually poising up. Oh, Blacklist have actually have the numbers advantage here. R7 is nowhere to be seen, but it's going to be actually a lot of damage placed. And that is Edward taking it right before the fight. Haji goes in for Skylar, is able to get onto him with the wave of the dragon. But R7 now is in the midst of it all. Let's see, he's going to go for the Bravest Fighter onto Wise. The stun not connecting, actually targeting to Venus. And that's brilliant by RRQ. But Clay is going to get caught out. Oh, heaven's infinite heading on the side lanes, but it's going to be Albert. Oh, oh hey! Still able to kite with the entropy of microwing and procuring that double kill. Wise, will he be able to connect the kill? He will! Shut down and a double kill. Blacklist equalizing. A delayed wipeout. Eventually, Blacklist took down everyone on the side of Arki Hoshi for the price of, again, Oh My Venus Life. Let's check out that replay. LaFell, break down what exactly happened. This is what I say. Blacklist International should not fight unless overextension coming in from uh, RQ. And look at all of the HP. They're all very low, but they still want to go very aggressive. And Oheb, he's been kiting every single thing. He's been dealing the damage without getting touched. And this is the mistake coming in from the side of RQ. They go ham, they go aggressive, which is what they have to do. But... They've been taking a lot of damage from the Natan, and they still keep on commencing, and that is bad because right now, Blacklist International, the scaling composition has 1,400 gold lead. That's the problem for our IQ right now. They don't know who to target. They target Venus, it's wrong. They target Wise, it's wrong. Because Wise is gonna get away with yeah. it, and Venus just likes it anyways, given the pull yourself together. I must note though, before. Oh my Venus again, falls, it's a four-man collapse, it, it's bound to happen, Albert gets the kill. I must commend how R7 actually entered that team fight. The relentless one using the maximum range of his whole kit on the Bravest Fighter. If, if there was a better follow-up, that would have been devastating for Blacklist, could have been a wipeout for them. I would say that that was a good initial oh. right now. Vin is engaging. Wait a minute, it's gonna be Wise taken down actually. The shutdown coming in for Albert as he pushes Haji back to the team. A lot of damage has in place. Edward going for the demonic force on the Skylar right now. It's a lot of damage already. Vin, why oh. is he dashing? He's gonna be punished for that. Oh, it's yep. gonna be Edward targeted right now. Albert still able to dash. It's gonna be Edward. Oh! Haji goes over the way of the dragon. Albert is gonna be connected and that's gonna be the kill picked up. Edward in the 1v3 is going to be able to outplay oh. RRQ. A one for one right now, but a beautiful team fight orchestrated by Blacklist. This is why. I said for the side of Blacklist, it's so good to take the Fovias because again, Vin, he doesn't want to do it, but he will yeah. eventually proc Edward to let him use his demonic force. And right now, Blacklist International, Edward's having such an easy time. He's just spamming his ult. It's bound to happen because again, it's the Ruby picked up in the first phase. That Fovius came Little in clutch. Last pick, Fovius. Oh. Beautiful. 3,000 gold lead right now. Blacklist are trying to suffocate their opponents and Haji. This man right here, he got caught a few times, but by a few times I mean one time, but that way of the dragon in that fight, that secured the team fight for them. Yeah, and I like how oh my Venus is just being a, a walking uh, walking vision and just like, yeah, Oheb, you just stay, do what you want to do. I'm going to be here. They're going to attack me first. They're going to have a lot of time to run away with Entropy. And right now, Gladys International, 3,000 gold up. They can actually take this turtle fight, but it is also an opportunity for Arakiyoshi to come back. Yep, in this whole scramble, the fact that they're trading left and right, left and right, it's good for Blacklist, but now oh. they're waiting to happen. There's a Demonic Force. Yeah, Demonic Force onto Vin right now. He can't go anywhere. It's gonna be Skylar targeted. The turtle has been taken away. Flame Shot being used to proc another Demonic Force once again onto the backside. But now for the airstrike, actually able to deal some damage. Albert going in, R7 goes to the backside. Brave Spider has been popped without damage, has been placed onto him. Albert going for the knockout oh. onto two members. RRQ need to disengage right here. Oh, him! He jumps all the way under the turret oh, and Wise picks up the kill. Beautiful arrow, beautiful execution by the Filipino champs. Just the right amount of aggression and overcommitment without a punish on the swing back. It's just the differences between how they fight, and right now they're fighting again. Oh, but look at that. Albert going for the knockout strike again onto Haji and Venus. Oh, him still able to proc the entropy for the airstrike being used. Venus is still able to run away, but not for long. Clay picks up a kill, and RRQ are still in the game. They might be... I think they are going to get outscaled, though. No, again, looking at how they play, this shows the level of 
thought that they put in turns of the team fight are Kyoshi going in full ham. They just want to deal as much damage as they can on the right targets. But look at how Blacklist International play. This is why I say the way that they execute their team fights, they want to outlast, they want to out sustain. Look at how they kite all the damage. Look at how much healing Oh My Venus is giving to the team. This is a clash of styles, and Blacklist International is showing that their style, as of right now, is superior. Oh, but wait a minute, R7. Oh, never mind. Never very mind. beautiful lead. <laughs> very, very beautiful. To, to build up on that, the sustain by Blacks International, it's not even their prime form yet. A lot of these team fights, Oh My Venus would die in the first True. two or three moves, right? So what if they're able to keep the Queen alive? I I'm starting to think, is this the right way? Should Oh My Venus actually play the Lightning Rod early on or try to stay alive? Maybe for the first 10 minutes, die, 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 and then eventually you go for inevitability. Yeah, also though, I want to put, my, uh, put everyone's attention onto Wise right now. There's a lot of hate actually for this man in the chat uh, previously on the BTK game because he's one-dimensional. He can only play, he's a weak link in the team. But you can see, man, this guy, every single hero he touches, he plays the role perfectly. Bane going for turrets, going for disengages, perfect. Going for the Yisun Shin, look at what he's doing. He is avoiding every single fight, the prime example being game one. And I'm liking right now because Edward has been such an enabler for him, oh. and look at the engage. Yeah, Haji actually going for the engage, but he's actually gonna fail, and that's gonna be him. Pop oh, still alive, very, very good by Venus right there, catching him, and also by Haji using that dash to get him to safety. But now it's time to take a look at the items. Yeah, looking at itemization of Akira, oh my Venus is going full on tank items and Oheb as well as Wise. Looking at the damage, they have three damage items each. So as of right now, they're almost at the peak form of how much damage they can deal. From the side of Arakiyoshi, Albert having two damage items and only one defensive item. He can go in, he can deal a lot of damage, but the problem is Vin right now. He's building cooldown, but every single time he's in the team fight, it's like a 6v4 right now. Vin. Yep. He's betraying his own team with no choice being on his own hands. Yep, yep. The, the, the pull actually is, is a lot more of a liability sometimes. And that's what's allowing these trades. Guys. Not even mention, not even mention how the Demonic Force is going to happen. Now it pops off! Yeah, Vin goes in for the, for the I'm offended. Only two members right now, but the fight is going to be very, very slow. Demonic Force to the backside. Edward's going to be targeted right now. He's not going to be able to die though. Vin is going to prop another Demonic Force, but it's actually a base. What? Edward, what is this? He survives that! And the killing spree by Oheb. Oh my god! Blacklist are outclassing RRQ! But honestly, look at Wise, 11 minutes in, 15. Level 15. Okay, yes, outclassing made the better decisions, the but just the same, sometimes you gotta say, that's what the hero does. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a brain damage. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna press one button mm -hmm. over and over again, and you won't kill me? Probably. Because again, looking at both of these teams, Blacklist International, again, they're scaling calm, they have the advantage, so yeah, even if Edward dies, it's fine. And this is what I want to say, game one and game two, Edward has been enabling Wise. Wise looking so strong right now, just because Edward is forcing Araki Hoshi to do everything that they can to take this man down. And when everyone's looking at Edward, no one is looking at Wise and Oheb, both of these heroes dealing massive damage coming in from the back line. And again, both Red of them having three damage destroyed. items, they're gonna hurt a lot. At this point right now, 5,000 gold lead, about to be 6k as they control the entire map. Differences is from the first game is that RRQ, they don't have a good high ground. Other than that Farsa, no one really can clear the waves as fast. Well, you can do it the old-fashioned way and attack it with, with, with Skylar, right? It'll take a little longer, but that's one duty. That's one role, responsibility that you're giving to Skylar who should be shredding through heroes, not minions. Oh, well, let's see. let's see right now. Blacklist International already planning for something. Haji going in with the seal. It is going to be RRQ zone away from the inhibitor turret. RRQ nowhere to go. Blacklist International pick up the inhibitor. Now they are just trying to defend. But at this point, once again, Blacklist will be the one con ones controlling an RRQ. Their defense isn't as good as game one. Yeah, and we also have to look at RQ. They have a lot of flickers on their hands, even Skyler. So right now, again, Gladys International, they're kind of losing to this Povius pick, where again, he doesn't have to do, do a lot of damage. He just has to be annoying. And we see that even if he gets low, the heal coming in from All My Venus, he doesn't even have to be a huge heal. You just have to give enough time for him to proc his demonic force. And Araki Hoshi, oh. what can he do? Oh my god, Edward jumps in all the way to the base right now, but it's gonna be Haji going for the bin with Dragon connecting with the flicker as well. For the airstrike being able to dash away, zoning Oheb, but man, eight. 
thousand gold lead. They're controlling the game, even though like it, it seemed close in that team fight. The health bars were going low. The kills didn't happen for RQ, and Venus can just heal everyone back up. Yeah, we keep talking about how Edward is doing so much for this lineup on Blacklist. Quick bit. The word, the name Edward actually means Guardian of Fortune. He's guarding everyone, man. Oh, look at that. Haji going for the Jeet Kune with The Dragon Connection on R7. The damage follow-up coming through as well. It's going to be a big dump. And Blacklist are looking oh. for... They collapse! Edward! Edward! What the heck? He dives the base, and it will all be worth it because Blacklist picks game two up. And that is match point for MPL Royalty, the Queen, and folks. I am honestly shocked. But just the same, putting my self in RRQ's shoes, is it really gonna happen? Am I gonna let this through? Right now, if they lose again, 3-0. Zero. Zero 6 to Filipinos. 0-6 zero to Filipinos. At From the zero, upper to... Oh. Six straight losses RRQ has against a Filipino team. Two different teams. But again, right now, I do have to say, it is in the draft. I don't want to sound boring, but that is really what it is. What can they do about this Phobius? I already talked about it in the first part of the draft, but if we look at the bands, they still focus on Oheb. They're taking out the Alice. They're taking out the Harif. They're letting this Phobius go. Like, we predicted it very, very early on. And again, Phobius got picked up later in, 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 the, in the pick of bands. Yep. The Lap Lapu, if, they, if they're replacing with Esmeralda, Probably better. Probably, right? But I think the analysts can actually put some thought more into this. Let's see, Gideon and Wolf, it's time for you to dissect game number two. Take it away. Boys, you're absolutely right. The draft definitely played a huge part of this. And uh, Edward, what can you really say about it? Paquito yeah. being and having a ruby, and not to mention you already have a Fovius. That's yeah. a lot of dashes to access that back line. Yeah, again, the last pick um, coming out from Blacklist International almost always just trumps the draft of RRQ. That 